Welcome to episode 61 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time. And Dad represents the delivery, recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today, and then applying that to those around me. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Memorial Day Remembrance, where I'll discuss some of my own thoughts on Memorial Day as both a libertarian and a veteran. I also have an announcement about this show that I'm looking forward to. But for now, let's get into the show. Memorial Day is an interesting holiday. It's federally recognized. Therefore, many Americans enjoy a three-day weekend. And many of those same Americans take the extended weekend to catch up on projects around the house, spend time with their families, and attend cookouts with family and friends. Sometimes all of the above. But many Americans visit graves and think fondly on memories of loved ones who died as they served their country in the armed forces. Like most of my libertarian peers, I have a particular sensitivity to the deaths that are a result of war. Our strong views on aggression often place us at odds with the prevailing view regarding how our armed forces ought to be used. These views demand from us that not only we express disdain for the lives that are lost of our fellow countrymen, but also people in foreign lands, including military and civilian. At times, our disdain for unnecessary aggression that results in death gets the best of us, and we occasionally fail to be mindful of our audience when expressing our anti-war views. How then should libertarians balance the two? How do they remain mindful of the real sacrifices and losses of their neighbors while strongly opposing the very wars that caused them? I rarely like mentioning my own service. When at an event and veterans are asked to stand for appreciation, I reluctantly do, only doing so as a courtesy. I have no experiences that I wish to remain unspoken. And if my time and service were made into a movie, it would be duller than a documentary. I generally just don't feel the need to let it be known. It's as simple as that. There is a story that calls to mind my personal feelings, though. Back in April of 2018, an incident happened here in Jacksonville. A city inspector walked into a local power sports business that sells various power, sport, uh, power sports vehicles like motorcycles, ATVs, and more. Against city regulation, the business was flying military flags for each of the four branches of the military. Their rooftop t- display included two United States flags, a Jacksonville Jaguars flag, and the flags representing each branch of the military. The inspector proceeded to give the business a warning citation, which stirred anger from one particular customer. Video footage showed, and the news reported, the woman asking the man what he did for his country. In response, he said, quote, I took three bullets to the leg. I almost lost my life for this country. I'm retired. I'm a veteran. The inspector then allegedly got in his face and said, you did nothing for this country. Wow, right? Like amazing. Immediate widespread outrage. Comes as no surprise that many were calling for her head for the inspector to be fired. This didn't sit right with me. No doubt the woman stepped out of line. That's regardless of whether you look at it from the viewpoint of respect for service members, the expectation of how city employees should be interacting with the public, or Just plain old good communication. After some thought, I posted something on the local Jacksonville Reddit, uh, subreddit. And here is what I said, quoting now, my own self. This story and the many comments all over social media struck a chord with me, and not in the way many might expect. She certainly was out of line. However, I would have hoped my service time would not be used as fodder to call for someone to be fired simply because they were discourteous. 
I find it alarming that we, as a society, are becoming more and more comfortable calling for others' jobs. What goes around comes around. Maybe you weren't or wouldn't be rude to a service member, but you most likely have said or done something to offend some group at some point. The America I served is not supposed to elevate one group above another, not even service members. We are all supposed to be equal. I joined the military and even served in Bosnia-Herzegovina because I thought it was the right thing to do. Because I wanted to serve my country, not for excessive praise then or now. I served so that others may enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I serve to keep this country a place where people can be free, <clears throat> even to make mistakes, especially when they make mistakes. It is when we make mistakes we learn the most. Across social media, I see much anger, but no grace. Is that really the America I served? Is that what freedom means? Yes, she was insulting, and yes, she deserves reprimanded. She also deserves pity and grace, for in that she will come face to face with her own ill feelings. And when she does, I hope there's an America with arms wide open like the prodigal son. If the America I served uses my service to tear at each other, hanging it over the heads of others, then I wish I hadn't. I could have saved myself the trouble and let them tear each other away anyway. Other service members may differ, and that's fine. As for me, if you want to respect my service, then do so without tearing each other down. Do so by reaching out to your neighbor, especially when they aren't reaching back. That's when they need it most and what really makes this country great. End quote. I know people who have lost loved ones in wars started during my lifetime. They are not comforted in the thought that their loved one might have died in a war that should have never happened. But we libertarians need not shy away from our disdain with reasons our country goes to war. We instead balance the then with the here and now. Libertarians oppose mandatory military service, believing instead that any military service should be completely voluntary. Service members who died in a foreign conflict did so with the very attitude we want from our service members, and that is the willingness to put their life on the line, even lay it down, for the moral cause of defending our country, possibly in the defense of another. Despite how they've been presented, most wars are neither. This is how we find that balance. We recognize American soldiers' patriotism is the willingness to give their life for the benefit of another. We also recognize that often they are asked, even misled, to put their life on the line for causes that are not legitimate. It's tempting to say that we honor the deaths of service members by fighting to prevent more. And it's true. That is one way we do so. But like my story of the city inspector, something just doesn't sit right. It feels incomplete. And I think it's the same feeling that we continually find ways to discuss how others should change and use the deaths of our country men and women in support of those ideas. For me, it's completely a feeling of incompleteness. We lack this idea. This idea is not lacking so much. Actually, let me back up a little bit here. The problem is that we're taking part of the conversation. We're not taking the entirety of the conversation. Don't worry. There's plenty of time to pick apart and criticize the decisions of our elected officials who are sending our sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, friends, or even just a neighbor off to war. But how often 
do we consider our own attitudes and behaviors during this time? When I look across social media, I say not nearly enough. Within the libertarian community, we spend too much time fighting our own selves, declaring boldly who is and is not one of us. But in the broader liberty community, uh, in the broader liberty movement, that includes libertarians and others who value elements of liberty in the same way that we do, there is equally too much dismissal and fighting. And that says nothing about the fighting when it comes to our real and stark differences with one another. Finally, whatever group we identify with, whenever one of those members is insulted, many of us treat it as an insult to all. This was the case with the inspector. It wasn't surprising that many were upset, even calling for her job. And the question isn't whether people have that freedom, it's whether that is the best use of their freedom. Oh, you do have that freedom. But again, it's, is that the best use of our freedom? Other service members, they may not necessarily agree with all of my words from back in 2018. However, I suspect that most service members would gladly accept a society that seeks to honor their service by offering grace when people inevitably fail, when a society builds members rather than tears them down, when we have a society that seeks to be at its best when in disagreement. The death and destruction of wars I oppose is no small matter. It's serious. My intent is not to pretend it comes second to how we as Americans interact with each other. No, that's not it at all. Lives lost, whether they be American or not, civilian or military, are all serious. I believe, though, to prevent such death and destruction, it does require a unified voice from an overwhelming number of Americans who are willing to say, enough is enough. I don't believe that voice comes before we change how we treat each other. Think of it this way. Our leadership the people that we elect, they reflect the people that they lead. After all, we're a constitutional republic, or more casually, a representative democracy. That is, we elect representatives who then make decisions by a majority vote. Therefore, we cannot expect those in positions of power to engage the world much differently than we engage each other. As this Memorial Day comes to a close, I encourage you to consider how you engage with others and ask yourself, is this the best use of my freedom? I hope you enjoyed this episode. Wherever you're watching from, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. At this point, I would normally transition to the bill review, where I take a bill from either the local, state, or federal level I read it, and I give it a lay perspective. But instead, I have an announcement that regular, regular listeners may find both exciting and slightly disappointing. And to spice this up a bit, this is where my script ends. If it wasn't obvious, this show is entirely scripted. Let's see how well I handle just a few bullet points, yeah? I mean, after all. It's time for that Toastmasters effort that I've been going through to kick in, right? Okay, so here's my announcement. This episode is going to be the conclusion of Season 2 of Liberty Dad. What I'm doing is I'm going to take two months, June and July. I'm going to take them. I'm not going to produce any shows. The reason for that is June looks to be extremely busy for me. I've got the Florida State Convention coming up where I'll be traveling down uh, to the Tampa area. And then I also have Porkfest up in New Hampshire. So if you're going to go to Porkfest or you're going to be at the state convention and we have not met, absolutely come find me and talk to me. I'm a short guy. I'll be wearing my, my signature coat most likely. Maybe not so much at Porkfest since I am camping. I don't know that it's appropriate necessarily to walk around in a sport coat. 
but you won't be able to miss me. I'll be bald and have, you know, like I normally am, and I'll have my beard, and I'm a short guy. You should be able to find me pretty easily. So I'll be at these two events in June, so it's going to take up a lot of my time in June, so I'm not really sure that I'm going to be able to deliver episodes. But more importantly, I want to try to explore some new ideas. So one of those ideas is that I'm going to take the bill review and I'm going to extract it out of Liberty Dad. I'm going to make it its own show. That's right. I'm actually going to come back with two shows. Okay, that's four. Two shows. And then what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to replace it with a different segment. Now, what is that segment? Well, you're going to have to you're going to have to wait and see. I intend to be back in August at the very latest September because again, I said that June is going to be extremely busy for me and hopefully everything that I'm trying to accomplish between June and July, I'll be able to do so. Now you might be asking yourself, well, DL, why don't you just roll into season three? It sounds like you've already got this idea worked out. Well, I kind of do. What I want to do is I want to explore some new show ideas that's partially related to how I produce the show and um, some of the scripting and just, just the whole gamut of the show. If you've ever produced a podcast episode and you've and you didn't just sit down and speak into the microphone, then you know that there's a lot that goes into it. I spend a lot of time researching a lot of things. I read bill reviews. You know, I work on my set. I'm literally in a 10 by 10 room. So I've got a lot of things that I really need to start considering. And I need just, I need a little bit of breathing room. And speaking of which, I'll be looking to do a set change. Again, this is one of those things that I'm going to keep a bit of a secret. I'm not going to tell you what that set's going to look like, but it's going to be a, a bit different than this set. And I think that when you see it, I think you're going to find it pretty exciting. I think you're going to be like, wow, that's pretty neat. You know, as long as everything goes the way that I intend, intend it to go, uh, you know, so this is, you know, I'm exploring here. You know, the other thing that I want to do, I want to have time to catch up with my audio only version. Unfortunately, what happened was last year I produced season one. This year, I produced season two, and I didn't produce a single audio only. And for me, the way that I like to produce my show, it takes a little bit more effort to produce this show in an audio only format um, than just taking the the video and then just extracting the audio and calling it a day. I, I, I have very specific things that I like to do. So I have not accomplished that just yet. Another thing that I'm doing, like I said, I'm, I'm extremely busy. So I'm, just, I'm letting you know what's going on here so that you know why this will be the conclusion for a short time. Another thing that I'm doing, because I am Liberty Dad, right? Like I have a two-year-old son, Liberty Son. Well, he needs a playground in the yard. And the one to produce that is me. Now, when I say produce that, I don't mean that we're going to go to the store and we're going to buy one and they're going to send all the wood and the instructions and then I go out and I just, you know, assemble as it's all put together. Nope, nope, that's not how I operate. No way. Instead, what I'm doing, I'm pulling out my copy of Google SketchUp and I'm literally drawing the whole thing, going out in the yard, measuring. We're going to work this out and it's going to be pretty awesome. He is going to really, really enjoy this. And the only thing that I have to worry about is making sure that I don't get overexcited and try to build them a small city. And that's been some of the delay so far because every time I go to look at plans and then draw them up, I'm like, all right, he needs this, and he needs this, and he needs this. At any rate, what else am I doing? I am also the affiliate chair. So if you're not aware of this, I am the affiliate chair here in Jacksonville, and we've got some really exciting things going on. Our affiliate is really doing some awesome stuff. One of the things that's happening is that we have three candidates, not one, not two, three candidates who are going to run for city council here in 2023. So we are gearing up to support them. And I'm doing a lot of things in order to support them and really help them make a serious run because I want them to win. So I've got to put some dedication to, uh, and some time to that. Now, I will say this. Don't worry. I'll be back, and I want to tell you, I talked to the writer, and he is excited about where things are going. I also talked to the producer, the video editor, the key grip, the lighting guy, the sound guy. They're all excited because they're all me. 
So I'm very, very excited. And, and, you know, hopefully you get the message there that this is a very serious production that I'm trying to put on. And to be honest with you, really have no idea what I'm doing. When I first started this podcast, I started it a year ago. I had no idea what I was doing. I grabbed a microphone. And in fact, the first microphone that I grabbed was a, was a cheap headset. And I kept talking into it. And the audio just sounded terrible. And I was like, oh my God, this sounds terrible. I don't even want to listen. I did not want to listen to me in order to edit. So I couldn't produce any episodes at that time. So then I went out and I bought a microphone. And it wasn't. it turned out not to be a good microphone. And I still was having problems and I didn't like the sound quality. So then I finally said, all right, I'm going to buck up. I'm going to get a decent microphone. So I went and got a decent microphone. And then I was able to start producing shows and ran into a lot of new things. Audio editing. What should it sound like? How much editing should I do? Where should I edit? All these crazy decisions that I had to figure out. And I was learning along the way. So the first show sounded much different than the very last show. Same thing with this, uh, with the video version. When I first started out, I painted my room green. There's pictures over on my Facebook page that you can see where there's literally a picture of me, you know, rolling with the uh, paintbrush, green screen back here. I was doing all these things because I had this particular idea in mind that I wanted to produce. I didn't really know what else I was, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just knew what I was going to try and do. Uh, at any rate, so I've got all this stuff that I'm learning and I'm, I'm learning kind of like on the job. And as I'm learning, there's a lot of things that I want to be able to produce, but I also want to keep some integrity with the show. So what happens is when I start a season, I like to continue that whole season kind of similar. You know, I don't want to have it just drastically change right in the middle if I can help it. So this is going to give me a little bit of an opportunity, a little bit of breathing room to explore some ideas and get prepared for season three. Again, like I said, I am producing two shows. There will be the regular Liberty Dad podcast show, and then there's going to be the Bill Review. What are they going to exactly look like? I haven't quite worked all that out yet. I don't know exactly um, you know, all the details. I just have some, some general ideas, but I think when I come back, I think when I come back at uh, in August or maybe in September, maybe September, I'm really, really going to aim for August. Um, when I come back, I think those who are watching this show now are going to be very pleased with what, what they're seeing. I think they're going to be really excited about it. And with that, let's go ahead and close out this, this episode and this season. That is all. If you are watching on YouTube, I want you to be sure to hit that subscribe button and especially so that you can be alerted when Season 3 starts. In my absence, I encourage you to check out other free speech media shows by heading on over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media network. And remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people, and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Have a great couple months. Catch you soon, and I'm out. Oh, 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 oh,